Welcome to another, yet another amazing video on trigonometry. In this video, we're going to be talking about the other trig values. So what are the other trig values? Well, sine, cosine, tangent are the main three trigonomic values or functions, but there are three more. They are known as the reciprocal trigonomic functions because they are exactly that, the reciprocal of the main three. The reciprocal is just taking your fraction, A over B, and flipping it over, B over A. So let's quickly look at them. Now, before we look at them, and I know they're all right here, we have to remember that the trig functions only exist in this specific scenario where we have an angle drawn in standard position and a circle centered at zero, zero. Therefore, the angle takes us to a terminal ray and that terminal ray intersects our circle at a point X comma Y. The Y is the vertical displacement, the X is the horizontal displacement, and the distance from the point on the circle to the origin is our radius. Therefore, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And if x squared plus y squared equals r squared, then we could take a square root of both sides and r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now in this setup, we have already learned that sine of our angle is the ratio of the vertical displacement to the radius. Cosine is the ratio of the horizontal displacement to the radius. And the tangent is the slope can't emphasize this enough, the slope of that terminal ray, but how do you find slope? Rise over run, vertical displacement is your run, horizontal displacement is your x, that's why tangent, which is the slope of your terminal ray, ends up being y over x. Here are our other trig function. First, we have cosecant. We abbreviate that CSC, cosecant of an angle is nothing more than the reciprocal of sine. It's thus the ratio of the radius to that vertical displacement y. So it just flips it over. Then we have secant, written with an SEC, but we pronounce it secant. It's just the reciprocal of cosine, so it takes the ratio of r over the horizontal displacement x. And then we have cotangent. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. It's just the ratio of the x horizontal displacement over the y vertical displacement. So that's it. That Those are our other trig functions. That's it. There's six of them in total. And if you know three of them, you automatically know the others because they are all reciprocals of each other. Pretty easy. And don't forget that there are four values in total. We have our angle theta. That tells us where to go. Without theta, we don't know where to stop. Wherever theta takes us, we have an x, we have a y, and we always have a radius, which is the distance from the origin to the point on the circle. Now, if you're on the same circle, the radius should always stay, well, the same. If you're on a unit circle, the radius is 1. Otherwise, your radius is, well, whatever I tell you it is. Or if you don't know your radius, you can always use this formula right here to help you find it. It's all that simple. Now, I also don't want to ever forget what you were taught in geometry class about the trig functions as well. Tri geometry class, it doesn't relate to an angle drawn in standard position. It just relates to a right triangle. And in a right triangle, we have sine, cosine, tangent, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent, all that fun stuff that you already learned in geometry. And then we have the, the other trig functions are just the reciprocals of that. So cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, adjacent over opposite. So that's all pretty simple. Even though we're not in geometry class, we don't reference this too often. In real world problems where we're dealing with triangles, then these things definitely help. All right. So let's look at some of examples as how we could actually apply this. So we have an angle, 13 pi over 9. There it is, ending us in quadrant three and there is an x and there is a y so we might ask a couple questions like hey what is sine cosine tangent and all the other six trig functions so again i know that cosine of my angle 13 pi over 9 is equal to my x value divided by my radius so again what's the radius well that is very important information that you do need to know so maybe i tell you the radius is five so therefore uh, to solve for x, I would need to multiply that 5 over, so I get 5 times cosine of 13 pi over 9. Now, that is an exact answer that I know you love so much. How do I get the approximate answer? I would have to go to my calculator. Just be very careful. Make sure that when you're going to your calculator, since my angle is in radians, I would make sure that I measure that in, or change my calculator's mode to radians. So when I type in 13 pi over 9, it knows what the heck I'm talking about. 
The y coordinate, well, what's the y coordinate? Well, sine of my angle, 13 pi over 9, is the y coordinate divided by the radius of 5. Multiply the 5 to the other side. 5 times sine of 13 pi over 9 is my y coordinate. That is awesome. That is easy. That makes so much sense, I hope. Then we have tangent. Tangent is the slope of that line. That's obviously pretty easy to find, especially since I know the angle, 13 pi over 9. And then don't forget, like, don't forget about those other trig functions. That's the whole point of this video. We do have cosecant of 13 pi over 9. What is cosecant? That's just going to be my radius 5 over my y value. That's it, just the reciprocal. Secant of 13 pi over 9 is simply going to be the radius 5 over x. It's really that easy. And then cotangent of 13 pi over 9, that's just going to be the reciprocal of my tangent. So that's just going to be my x over my y. I guess I could write that in here. Tangent is y over x. Cotangent is x over y. So that's awesome. Now, the only thing I want you to note is that we do not have buttons on our calculator for cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Not a big deal, but hopefully this all makes complete sense. Here's another example real quick. We have an angle, there it is, 300 degrees, all the way into quadrant four. We have an X, we have a Y, this is easy. But I want to notice something that I talked about if you watch previous videos over exact trig functions. The reference angle here, that is the angle measured to the closest X axis right there, that reference angle is... 60 degrees. Full circles 360. If I subtract 300, I'm left with 60 degrees in my reference angle. Now, I love 60 degrees because when I think about the triangle, vertical displacement, horizontal displacement of this triangle, let me highlight this triangle here. There's that cool triangle. That is a special triangle. So when we talk about, oh, hey, I know that cosine of 60 degrees equals the x coordinate. Now, what's the radius? I should always probably lead with that. Let's, let's just say we're on the unit circle where the radius is 1, so I don't have to really worry about it. Multiply the 1 on the other side, nothing really changes. So cosine of 60 degrees equals x. Sine of 60 degrees equals y over the radius of, well, 1, so just y. Because this is our special right triangle, one of our two special right triangles, I don't need a calculator to help me. I know that, for example, the shorter leg in a 30, 60, 90 triangle is 1 half. There I go. The longer leg in a 30, 60, 90 triangle is radical 3 over 2. So I, I, I already know my values. It's really that simple. Don't, it doesn't really take a whole lot of work there. Now, what about secant? Secant of 60 degrees is the reciprocal. Well, that's going to be the radius, which is 1 over x. Now, what about the exact value here? Well, listen, don't panic. Six secant of 60 degrees. Again, it's the reciprocal of cosine. I already know cosine is one half. What's the reciprocal? Two over one. There it is, right? It's that simple, right? I mean, I know what X is. Again, why do I know what X is? Because this is a special right triangle. And since X, since X is one half, and I know that secant is reciprocal of that, then secant is just going to be two. Same thing here for cosecant of 60 degrees. Cosecant of 60 degrees is going to be, well, um, by definition, it's, it's the radius over the y coordinate. But because this is a super special triangle, I know the y coordinate is radical 3 over 2. So cosecant would be the reciprocal of that. So that's going to be 2 over radical 3. Now, I don't like leaving radicals in denominators. So, of course, I would multiply that top and bottom by radical 3 and get 2 radical 3 over 3. Pretty easy. What about cotangent? Well, I guess I should talk about what tangent is. Tangent of 60 degrees is the y divided by x. So I got to do a little bit of work here. The y, because I'm in a special triangle. Again, I can only do this in this special triangle. That would be the y value of radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. And if you're a little bit confused of where I got the 1 half, the radical 3 over 2 from, please go back and watch that video I've made over the exact values of trig functions. But again, that's pretty ugly right here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean this up by taking the numerator. And instead of dividing by one half, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of two over one. Twos are going to reduce and I get radical three. So there's tangent. So what may you ask is cotangent of 60 degrees. Well, by definition, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. I just found that tangent's radical three. So cotangent is one over radical three. 
Again, don't like leaving a radical in the denominator. Multiply top and bottom by radical 3, and we get radical 3 over 3 for cotangent. It's really that easy. Like, I'm not trying to overcomplicate this, but I can't emphasize why could I not do any of that super cool exact stuff in this previous problem? Because this wasn't one of our perfect nice triangles. This was not a 30, 60, 90 triangle, whereas here it is. So if you're not a reference angle of 30, 60, 90, then excuse me, I said 90, 30, 45, or 60, then you just got to use your calculator. Otherwise, we know the exact value is nice and simple. Okay, let's look at a problem like this where we have an angle. There it is. I don't know what it is, but I do know that it ends at a point of negative 5, 2. So I already know what x is. I already know what y is. So the next logical question is what's r, right? What's the radius? That's always a really big thing that you need to know. Well, I do know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. I know that for sure because if I make a triangle with my vertical displacement, my horizontal displacement, and my radius, I get Pythagorean's theorem. So I can actually use that to my advantage. So x squared is going to be a positive 25. Uh, y squared is going to be a positive 4. So I get 29 equals r squared. So the square root of 29 Unfortunately, that doesn't reduce, and I don't want to give a decimal there, but my radius is the square root of 29. Now, what could I do? Well, I could say, hey, what are my six trig functions? So let's just go straight down the line. Sine of theta is the y2 divided by the radius, radical 29. Cosine of theta is the x, negative 5, divided by the radius of radical 29. Tangent of theta is the y value, 2, divided by the x value of negative 5. Now let's keep going with our other trig functions. So now I have, and there's really no order you have to go in here, but I have cosecant of theta. Again, use the cheat sheet if you need to that I talked about earlier, um, you, know, what, you know, back here all the way what all these values were if you need to. Uh, cosecant is going to be the radius, radical 29, over the y, 2 secant of theta is the radius of radical 29 over the x of negative 5. And finally, cotangent of my angle is going to be the x divided by the y. That's going to be, oh, I almost messed it up, negative 5 over 2. That's it. I mean, gosh, come on, guys. How easy is this? Now, again, keep in mind, a couple little quick comments here. Radiuses can only be positive. A radius is a distance. Distance can never be negative. So if you ever get a negative for your radius, you did something wrong. And be careful. This is a great answer. It's a beautiful answer. So is this one. But we don't like leaving square roots in the denominator of our final answers. So we would rationalize that to get rid of it. But I usually do that at the very end. Like I like to go through my six trig functions first and then worry about cleaning the answers up and making them look all pretty at the very end. All right. Nice and simple. Let's do one more problem. So here's a problem with no triangle drawn. I mean, you could draw it if you want to, but this is, um, I'm given that cosine of some angle is three sevenths, and I'm given that the angle is somewhere between 270 and 360. Now, you don't have to draw a picture, but I really think a picture is worth a thousand words, especially since I've gone over what these trig functions represent in the first place. So here's my initial side. It says that I'm somewhere in quadrant four which would be, again, I don't really care if you're too accurate where you drop. It's got to be somewhere down here in quadrant four because in quadrant four is where our angle would be between 270 and 360 degrees or in radians, that would be three pi over two to two pi. All right, now here's the deal. I want to find all other trig functions. So I've got one, I need to find five more. Watch how easy this is. First, we have to interpret what it is we know. Because we know cosine, that means we know x, and that means we know r. By definition, cosine of an angle is the ratio of the horizontal displacement x to the radius r, so I immediately know what x and r are. So I'm going to write that down. x equals 3, r equals 7, because anytime you're dealing with a circle, like the radius and the x and the y of this point are really important. So I know the radius is 7, I know the x is 3. There's only one thing left for me to find that can help me find all trig functions, and that's my buddy y. How do I find y? Well, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. x squared is 9. I'm solving for y. Radius squared is 49. Subtract the 9 over. y squared equals 40. Square root both sides. Now, unfortunately, 40 is not a perfect 
square root. Sorry, I wish it was like a 25 or a 36, but I can reduce it. 40 is four times 10. The four can come out as a two, and unfortunately the 10 is stuck in there. So there's my Y value. Now there's one really important detail that honestly, from year to year, I would say around 33% of kids completely forget about, and it really gets them wrong answers. Since I am in quadrant four, which I knew because of the fact that I told you I was in quadrant four, that Y value does need to be made negative. When you use Pythagorean's theorem, X squared plus Y equals R squared, you're always going to get positive results, but you need to take into account the context of the problem to realize that I am in quadrant four. So since I am in quadrant four, the Y value is negative. Need to put a negative on it. All right, now I'm good to go. All right, I already know cosine. Let's go ahead and find sine. Sine of my angle is going to be the Y value, negative two radical 10 divided by my radius. Tangent is going to be my Y value, negative two radical 10 divided by my X value of three. And then now here comes my other trig functions. So let's see here. Let's go with, um, we'll do secant first. Again, there is really no order here. Secant is the R7 divided by the X3. Now remember, by definition, these are reciprocal. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So once I know cosine is three sevenths, I easily know secant is the reciprocal, seven thirds. Cosecant is going to be the radius of seven divided by the Y value of negative two over radical 10. And lastly, cotangent of my angle is going to be the reciprocal of tangent or X three divided by Y negative two radical 10. Again, I can't tell you enough, about 33% of kids will forget all these negatives and they're going to get four of the values wrong because they forgot that they needed to make the Y negative since I'm in quadrant four. So you got to really pay attention to that. Also, remember, anytime you leave a square root in the denominator, you should get rid of it by rationalizing the denominator. All you got to do is multiply by radical 10. So let's see, that's going to give me seven radical 10 in the numerator. and the denominator, the radicals turn into 10, but then I got to multiply that by the negative two, so I get a negative 20. So there's just my cleaner. In fact, some people may say it's not cleaner, but it's the better final answer. Same thing over here, multiply both by radical 10, and I get three radical 10 in the numerator. and the denominator, I get negative 20. The radical 10s make a 10 times the negative 2 is, is negative 20. So that's just a slightly better answer that doesn't have a square root in the denominator. All right, I mean, that's it. That, that's really how simple these problems are. Everything is connected through X, Y, and R. If you know X and you know Y and you know R, you, you, you could literally find all six trig functions. If you don't know any of them and you just know the angle, well, then that's where you got to use a calculator unless you're perfect. Now, remember here, 60 degrees, the reference angle for 300 was a perfect special angle. In that case, you don't necessarily need to use the calculator because we know the values. We know the legs of those special triangles. All right, that's it for the other trig functions. Pretty easy. See you later.